What it do, man? It's your boy Battle Truth coming to you live and direct from the Battle Truth headquarters. Let's get right off into this. So Surf took it to Instagram where he began to speak. And somehow the conversation of God came up. And then Surf gone and ran about God. Called himself respecting God but disrespecting him at the same time. According to him, he believed in God, but he is not going to give God any type of repentance while he's alive. His repentance will come before God only when he died and stand before God, according to him. He said, I'm not going to do nothing while I'm still alive down here. He said, when I die and I see God, then I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to holler at God and I'm going to let God know like, hey, you know, man. This was his exact words. You saw them bad bitches down there. It was hard, you know, resisting temptation down there with them. And these are the things that actually is so damning. The Bible say every man will be held accountable for every false and idle word spoken out of his mouth. Jesus said they do not respect the living God and his holiness. They do not respect the living God and his holiness. It's crazy because surf ain't the only one think this way. A lot of people really believe that when they die, they going to stand before God and give him this heartfelt speech of how things were so tough down there that is going to persuade God to caring, to give them a pass. Disregarding their whole entire life and all the wrong that they ever did. So you think you finna pimp God? Because that's exactly what you're saying. Think of the mind of how human beings is. Look at our brain. Our little bitty brain. Convince you. To come up with some type, some type of moral understanding in which you will out manipulate and think and deceive the living God. Whose mind is beyond your thinking, your little brain and the God of all creation brain. You are going to give him a speech so moving, so heartfelt, different than any of the other billions of people that's in line right behind you to persuade and convince him to let you through disregarding everything you did your whole entire life. See, I want to address you, brothers, and I thank God this one I'm here for. I thank God this is what I'm here for. You brothers are cowards. Let me explain and say that one more time. You brothers are cowards. You ever heard the saying, if you scared, go to church? Well, that's a lie. Because people who not afraid go to church. It's the ones that are afraid that avoid the church. That avoid the investigation and study in the God. That avoid humbling themselves before God. That avoid calling out his name. Because they are afraid to hear his answer. They are afraid of finding out the truth. They are afraid of drawing closer to him. They are afraid to change their wicked and corrupted evil lives. But because I care about you, Surf, Rock, Arsenal, Mav, Sway Seven, Head Ice, anybody who uh, claimed the title of being gangster, gang banging, I'm going to bring you the truth that you are afraid of. And every last one of y'all that's listening and watching right now, I'm going to bring you the real hardcore truth that you are afraid of. So... If you are a coward, by now, you should be changing the channel. You should be going to find something else to watch. But if you are a stand-up person who is not afraid to stand up and accept your responsibilities, who is not afraid of truth, 
then this will be good for you and hopefully will change your life forever and bring you to a saving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for all your sins. Well, let's talk about these things, sir, because you under the impression that when you die, you're going to give a nice speech before the living God so heartfelt that you're going to win him over and he's going to forgive you and let you in heaven. A lot of people think and feel that way too. The devil always get people with the three D's. Doubt, distraction, and the disappointment of knowing that in that doubt, in that distraction, the disappointment of those things is your eternal salvation lost in eternal darkness. Now, let's get off into these things. You doubt the living God, which means it brings distractions in your life. How is the judgment going to go? Let me tell y'all something. People who accepted and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and live a Bible believing righteous life, pleasing and acceptable unto God according to his word by the power of his Holy Spirit will not be judged based upon their eternal place and position. We don't, we not judge, but the non-believers who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You will be judged. You will be judged for your eternal place and position. You will be judged. Some people believe God is true, but they don't want nothing to do with God because they feel that they're young and they got their whole life ahead of them. And one day, eventually, when they're ready, they're going to get themselves together. Some people believe that they know exactly when they're going to die. So just before I die, I'm going to repent and call out to God to forgive me of my sins so I can be saved. But until that day happens, I'm just going to keep living my life the way I've been living my life as a sinner. But then eventually, whatever happened to me, I have enough time to pray, ask God to forgive me, and then all will be forgiven. You know, we deceive ourselves. The great disappointment. We deceive ourselves really believing that. Oh, when I die, like, sir, oh, when I die, I'm going to stand before God. I'm going to tell you, I'll be like, man, God, it was hard down there, man. Niggas trying to kill me, man. Uh, 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 I was poor. My father wasn't in my life. Do you know you can't use none of those excuses? The very judge you are giving, trying to give those excuses to, but I'm opening you up to something else. The very judge you give him those excuses to, do you not know if the Lord Jesus Christ himself, God who was manifested in the flesh, who became a man and lived on his own planet? How was his life for somebody to say, oh God, my daddy wasn't in my life. I was raised all alone by myself. My father wasn't there. It was hard for us. Mama was struggling, had to make things happen on her own. Jesus going to say, yep, same thing with me. They tried to kill me the moment I was in the stomach of my mother. She was on a run for her life and my life. We didn't even have a place during her pregnancy where she can rest because they wanted to kill me. And I was born in a barn, in a manger, a trough where the animals eat and use the bathroom out of. That's what I was born in. I took upon the lowest, even though I'm the king of all eternity. I didn't want to be born in a castle. I didn't want the riches. I didn't want the pa parents of the glamorous and Popular. No. Give me the rejected. Give me the lonely. Give me the scorn. Give me the hurt. 
That's what I took upon. So I can also share in the suffering of my people. That's why I love God. He's not just, he not a, just a talker. His action back up while we praise and worship him. Then the person may say, oh, they was hating on me. You know what he's going to say? They was hating on me too. My own people handed me over to my enemies. And these people they handed me over to was racist. The racist Romans who put me on the cross and crucified me, spit on me, beat me, stabbed me. Curse me out. My own people clapping hands with the same racist people that hated me. And they handed me over. Well, oh, my father wasn't in my life, yeah. And while I was on earth, my father was in heaven. Yeah, I definitely understand you. I definitely feel you. But even through everything I ever went through, all the pain, all the rejections, all the trials and tribulations, I overcame. And I put my trust in him who loved me. And I depended on the strength and power of his might to get me through and not my own. Oh, we were poor. I was poor too. How could you stand before the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and give any excuse of why you couldn't believe, why you couldn't receive, why you was alive, but yet you took for granted the love, the grace, the mercy, the peace, the truth, and the gifts of God that he freely gave you to be a blessing to others and a savior for your own family that you rejected because you wanted the pleasures and you wanted the popularity of this life at the expense of your own and watching your own family suffer. Yeah, you're going to stand before God and talk, huh? You're going to give him this speech, huh, sir? Well, let's see what the Bible have to say about the great day of judgment. See, because what you don't get is it ain't no talking in judgment. You didn't already talk your whole life. You're not going to get to heaven and talk. You talk too much as it is. God don't want to hear nothing you have to say. You know why? Your life spoke for it already. See, a lot of y'all don't know that when human beings were born, Every human being was born, came into this world. According to the Bible, they were given their own angels. You have an angel that you can't even see that records your everyday life. Let's read the judgment of what's going to take place when people die who didn't receive Jesus Christ and stand before the Lord. This is the line you are going to be in, sir, according to you. You're not going to repent while you're alive and on earth. You're not going to call out to God. You're not going to seek him. You're going to wait till you die. Then you're going to talk to him. Well, the Bible definitely shows you what line you're going to be in and how things are going to go. Here's your judgment written in the word of God. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 and 15. It says, and I saw a great white throne. And God sat on it, whose face the earth and the heavens fled away from. You know how people always be like, why God don't show itself? Why he don't show? This is how his face is, seeing his face. He sat on a throne whose face the earth and the heavens fled from. You don't want to see God. You really think you want to see God as he is? I doubt it, according to the Bible. The heavens and the earth, the very sight of it, make them flee from it. Because that thing you tried to deny and escape from and put out of your mind and, and, and made yourself believe didn't exist. It's right there before you and it's true and nobody can save you. Nobody can stand in your place. Nobody could give an account for you. No place you can go and run and hide because it's there. Look what it says. And him who sat on the throne, God, who faced the earth and the heavens fled away, there was found no place for them. There was found no place for them. No way you can go. It say, and I saw the dead, small and great, those who popular to the lowest of them. 
stand before God in the books with an S. The books were open and another book was open. One book was open and books were open. Books with an S was open and one singular book was open. It say, and another book was open. It say, let me go back to verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. The one singular book is the book of life. Okay? It say, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the dead was judged according to the things that were written in the books according to their works, the things they done, their actions. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the death and death and hell delivered up they dead which was in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell was passed into the lake of fire. This is their second death. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was passed into the lake of fire. Okay, let's examine this. So there were books with an S, meaning more than one. And then there was a book. A book. That book is described in the Bible, the book of life, was the singular book, meaning that everybody in that book of life who accepted Jesus Christ and who was who who who, who, who in that book, that's who received eternal life. So whoever name was in the book of life, that's who received eternal life. But the everybody who wasn't in that book. They were judged by the books with an S. In other words, every person have their own books. Books. How many books do you got? If an angel was recording your whole life, every day, every minute, every hour, every second, how many books do you think you have? The written record of your of everything you ever did on earth. Every action, every thought, every, every intention. What is written in your books? The things you've done privately, the things you've done publicly. What are in your books? How many books do you think you got? It say, and death and hell gave up they dead. Everything that was dead, rise. Because this is the day of judgment. Now, it's time for every man to give an account for their actions. Notice in the judgment, nobody is talking. But they judge by the things in the book. But none of them is talking. Nobody is talking in this judgment. Why? Your life already spoke for you. There's nothing to talk about. See, God is a God of order, power, king, real majesty. Not none of this reckless talking out of pocket. Everybody got something to say. Silence in the kingdom of heaven. The majesty on high is here. Who faced the heavens and the earth fled from. And the dead both small and great. Everybody you thought was popular. Tupac, Biggie, Michael Jackson, Prince, Rick James. To the smallest of them. They books were opened. All that laughing. All that kicking it. All that patting you on the back. All that crip throwing up them signs. Yeah, guess what? The God of all creation is at sea. Stand before me. Stand before me. What angel was appointed to this man on the day he was born? And your angel going to come forth. I was. You appointed me on the day he was born to keep record of his life. 
See, here's the thing you don't even get and understand. This judgment is so deep, it ain't only God judging you. Let me tell you who else judging you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Let me show you who else is judging you and this judging. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Here we go. I'm going to start from verse 1 and read verse 2. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? How dare any believer go to non-believers against another brother? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world should be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters among yourselves? What? What did it say? The saints will judge the world. The body of believers in Jesus Christ, the true, holy, righteous, Bible-believing Christian family will judge the world right along with God. Why is this so important? See, sir, let me tell you something. You're not going to be able to play God. Neither is you going to be able to play people. Because the people who will be right there behind God while he's on his throne, judging the great and the small. You know why we there? Because here's something you can't answer. Why would these same people coming from the same world planet you were in. Why was they able to believe and you wasn't? How you gonna pimp me? You can't pimp me now. You can't trick me now. You think you gonna trick me when I'm in a glorified state? A glorified state, free from sin, sickness, and disease, in a righteous place with God himself. You can't trick me now. God is powerful. See, this great white throne judgment is going to be so powerful, so fearful for everybody. Because guess what? You can't escape it. There's no way for you to go. There's nobody who can stand in the place for you. There's nobody who can speak on your behalf. And you have nothing covering you. You don't even have clothes or nothing. No, the Bible say men is naked before the living God. Naked before the living God. Stripping of everything. Nothing can cover you. I see straight through you. Stand there. Naked as you is. And give an account for your actions. You have no comfort. You have nothing, nothing, and nobody who could defend you. Not at this time. And all that talking, all that jacking, all that tough talk people do because they're alive and they ain't dead yet. Yeah, that sounds real good, don't it? But when you before the living God. You ain't talking none of that tough stuff. All that cussing, all that disrespectful, all that gang gang talk, all that stuff is eradicated out of them in the presence of the living God. You wouldn't even dare try to speak it even if you wanted to. The Bible say the angels of God dragging people before the throne of the living God. They nails. No, I don't want to go there. You coming. You coming. Don't get scared now. All that tough talk y'all were talking on earth. Look at it. You wanted to see his face, right? There it is. Say it to his face. Like you said it to your homies. Like you said it to your God. Say it to his face. There he is. You ain't got no gun, no clips, nothing. It wouldn't help you anyway. Say it to his face. There he is. Ain't nothing you can say. You ain't got a crip in line that could defend you. Not even the leader of them. 
In fact, they probably right behind you next, watching yours like, who can save us? Nobody. And forgiveness is no longer available for y'all. Forgiveness is only available while you are alive to give you the opportunity to repent for your sins and accept Jesus Christ before you die. When you die, forgiveness is no longer available to you. You are in judgment because the blood of Christ is not covering you. The Lord God is revealed in you. Everyone you broke every day of your life. And the body of believers, other human beings, is also judging you, saying guilty. He guilty. We believed he could have believed too. I ain't have my father in my life. I didn't come from Beverly Hills. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was hated on. I was ostracized. I was neglected. My mama then wasn't really in our life. But yet I was still able to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who loved me. Regarding to the hard tri trials and tribulations, crisis of my life. So you are without excuse. Mm -mm. See, this judgment going to be so deep, so powerful. It has to be. Because God is judging people for all eternity. If I'm going to send you to hell forever, this judgment has to be. This judgment has to be right. It has to be true. It has to be holy. And then some people say, oh, what God has sent people to hell? A God of love? It's obvious y'all don't love. It's obvious y'all don't care because you want to go to hell. He didn't make hell for you. You chose to go because you didn't want nothing to do with him, which means you didn't want to live right. You didn't want to love. You didn't want to be righteous. You wanted to be evil, wicked, corrupted. So don't get mad because you go to the place where evil, corrupted people go. If you want to live and be righteous, loving, holy, pure before God, Jesus would be somebody you wouldn't, you wouldn't dare go against. You would easily want to be a part of. But you don't when you wicked and corrupted and you evil and want to do wrong and want to assist others in doing wrong. So don't blame God for what you chose to do when he made a way for you. So don't give us that weak talk trying to make it sound good. Like, oh, why God would send people to hell? You believe in the fiery place of hell? I sure do. And it's deserving and need to be there. Think y'all just going to get away with just destroying and hurting and lying and deceiving and tricking and manipulating and murdering and killing and get up out of here. God ain't like us. God is a righteous, holy God. And it shows you just how wicked and evil people is. You know the truth and you still don't want to do right. You know God real. You still don't want no part of him. But you want to be in a game. But the God who made and created you, you don't want nothing to do with. But you will worship another man who corrupted who set this system up that continue to kill y'all and keep y'all in prison revolving doors, strip y'all of y'all family and children and loved ones. You love and accept them and praise them on cheek, on this, on who, on neighborhood, on this. But when it comes to God, you disrespect, mock, spit in his face, lie, tear down the cross to justify your actions. And you supposed to be real? Ain't nothing real about that. That's fake as hell. As a father, your responsibility is to bring life to your children, knowing that they eventually one day going to die. And God is the only one can give them life. And because you are afraid and you are a coward, you don't want to know the truth. You don't want to investigate the truth. You don't call out to God. You don't want to know what can save your family life. So you do things the easy way. It's easy to live like a damn rat. It's easy to hate. It's easy to lie and cheat, manipulate, cuss, scream and holler. That's easy to do. Any damn fool can give up on his family. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's exactly what you're doing. But a real man humble himself. Seek the face of the living God. Bring life into that family. Rather than killing it. Like the damn asshole you are. Yes, I said it. Got shot five times and you're still playing these games. 
in and out of prison and you still playing these games. But then want people to feel sorry for you every time tragedy and crisis hit and strike you. Shame on you. Then you brothers get fake, so fake. Oh, I miss my kid. I want my son. I want my daughter. I want my family. But when you got the freedom to be with them right now, you don't want to. And then think, because you buy my outfit and a pair of shoes, you doing something. You a good father. Gang banging, grown as hell, gang banging, doing drugs, selling drugs, criminal thugs all around your kids and children. You won't even protect and provide the protection over your home like a real man's supposed to. Then sitting there trying to blaspheme and mock God. Disrespect the living God who keeping you alive even though you undeserving of it. It don't even sound right. Wake up. Disrespecting your parents. Kicking it with your mama like she your friend. Calling her by a real name. Cursing all in front of her. Drugs all in her house. At your mama house. All my transactions happen at my mama house. What's wrong with you, dude? You act like you retarded. Shameful, man. You brothers out of pocket. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You don't want to respect the people you love, but the moment you get a case, you in that courtroom so respectable, so humble, so loving toward the judge you never seen. But the one who birthed you, carried you in her womb, put food on your table, roof you even in your ignorance, you ain't got no respect for it. Come on, man. Get up out of here. Brothers, brothers, shameful, man. Y'all don't even understand life. Those same guys you laughing, kicking it with, will stroke your girl, turn you in, shoot you in your head, set you up with the authority. Backstab you, hate on you, rob you, beat you down. Get up out of here. Get up out of here. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. I'm sorry, y'all. I get passionate when it comes to the things of God and life. And I'm just so tired of seeing how easily... People allow themselves to get to go into the devil. They just let the devil just have them real easily. Then they always got these sad excuses. These sad excuses for what they voluntarily give up. This dude talking about he gonna be telling all the bad bees down there. What? Man, you sound crazy, man. They don't even sound right. Matthew chapter 13, verse 42. It say, the son of man should send forth his angels, 41. The son of man should send forth his angels and they should gather out of his kingdom and all things that offend, fend them which do iniquity, verse 22. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gashing of teeth. There shall be wailing and gashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth at the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who had ears here, let him hear. Whoever have ears here, let them hear. Do you see that? It say in verse 42, and he will cast them into a furnace of fire. Revelation chapter 21, that lake of fire. There shall be wailing and gashing of teeth. Wailing and gashing the teeth. The definition for wailing and gashing the teeth is a disgust of oneself. You ever been so mad and angry at yourself that you grit your teeth? That's what it means by wailing. Wailing is a, is a screechy, airy, regretful cry. Gashing the teeth is a disgust of oneself. So, in other words... When people were going to hell and getting thrown into the lake of fire, they mad at themselves because they acknowledge and admit that they are the one who put themselves there. 
They the ones who put themselves there. In this judgment, God ain't got to say you guilty. You're going to be the one saying you guilty yourself. You're going to be wailing and gashing at the teeth of a disgust of oneself. Of yourself. So before you can mock God, and before you can sit there and talk as though God is some little thing and you disrespect his holiness, thinking you're going to walk up to the throne of the almighty God, and you're going to talk to him like he your nigga, he your homie, he from the neighborhood, he from the block. Man, you got another thing coming and you way out of reality. You are way out of reality. In the world you live in is definitely some Marvel comic type thing. God will not be a plaything for you. You will not disrespect the living God and his presence. You won't even be able to behold his face. You will kneel before the throne of the living God naked as you were the day you came into this world. And you will confess with your tongue that Christ is the Lord to the glory of the living God. Whether it's to go to heaven or whether it's to go to hell, you definitely going to say that before your sentence is given to you. God will not play with you. God will not be a small thing for you to think you can just manipulate and pimp and give some type of street lane game to him like he's some type of female. That's not going to happen. And the angels of God, which guard the throne of the living God, do you really think? You, let me just open you guys up to something. I don't get you guys. Listen, let me tell you something. Can you walk up to a lion in the wild and rub it? Can you go in the water and play with a crocodile? A full-grown crocodile. Could you walk up to a gorilla in the wild and hand it an apple to eat? No, you can't. Even the animal to the smallest one that God created will tear your head off. Will tear your head off at the presence of them. At the presence of you. What makes you think you're going to walk up to the living God who made and created them and do that what you think you're going to do? Wake up. Stop being a coward and come to the reality of the truth of the living God who loves you. You don't have to accept this. You don't have to believe it's true. It worked for us either way. My job is to give the message. It's up to you whether you believe or not. It don't change my reward because God blessed me and my faithfulness. But because I love you and I do care and I don't want to see nothing happen to you, brother, I give you the truth in a way where you can understand it. Not in a way that it's been uh, uh, watered down, manipulated to a point where you can't feel it or believe it. But in a way that you can understand it, uh, achieve it, reach out to grab it and believe in the Lord who loves you. Now, where your heart at? Is you going to continue to be evil, corrupted, an ungrateful type person? Or is you going to humble yourself before the living God and find out your divine purpose of why he put you here to accomplish the will and purpose of God in your life for the love of your family and future? The rest is up to you. It ain't my judgment that's in question. It's yours.